Joanne Parks, caretaker of Max, is going to share a little bit, and then she's going to gift us with a special surprise. First of all, I wish to thank each of you for being here, and I want to thank Tib. I don't know if Ann's here, but I thank Ann because they do a tremendous amount of work. Let's give them a big clap. I thank them completely. Let's give them a big clap, yes. Stand up and give them a big ovation, yes. Thank you, Tim. Thank your lovely and beautiful wife who I love, Ann, wherever you are. All right. <laughs> Nobody it does it better. <laughs> okay. We were talking about peace. And back in 1999, of course, I'm the keeper of Max, as most of you know. 37 years, I've shared him for 27 years, nationally and internationally. And back in 1999, he kept waking me up in the night, two or three o'clock in the morning, he says, write the peace message. I said, it's two o'clock in the morning, can you leave me alone, we do it a little later? He says, no, you gotta do it now. You'll forget it. So I get up and I said, okay. I write it on the back of an old MasterCard receipt, and I go back to bed. <laughs> Next night, again, hey, wake up. Go write the peace message. I said, you bother me again, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I said, you know, just a little bit later, a little bit more sleeping, why 2 o'clock in the morning? Because this is the best time. He says, go write it. I said, okay, okay, okay. So I go stumbling there, and I write some more. That went on four or five days. And it stopped, I got some sleep. So I went in there and I turned all of these papers over. And I took a good look at them. And as I was looking at them, he showed me the world. I was looking out of this world through his eye, I mean out of his eyes into this world. He showed me the sorrow of the world, the unhappiness of the people in the world, the destruction of the world, then, there was no world. But then he showed me the beauty in the world, the happiness of the world, the glory in the world, the joy of the people in the world, because it was the new world. And down this world was the words, peace. And this is how it goes. And if you want to get up, let's do the dance for peace. Let's start it. Okay, let's clap our hands. Woo! Sharing of her rebirth. A is for mankind, red, yellow, black, and white. C is for the courage it's going to take to make it right. E is not for easy, we got to fight with all our might. To make this world a better place, our love will make it right. You got to put this all together and it's the best piece for you and me. We will all come together in a world that will be free. P E A C E spells peace for you and me. P E A C E, that's how it's got to be. Until we trust each other and we learn how to bend, these wars will keep on raging on right to the very end. Mankind will not awaken until we learn how to bend. Truths for love and peace, Lord, it all begins within. That's how we're gonna make it, yes, that's how we'll win. Cause the wars that we hate so much really do begin within. Happy is for the past mistakes, E is for the every little day. A is for all mankind, C is for courage and time and peace. It's not for easy until we trust each
it's got to be Until we trust each other and we learn how to bend These wars will keep on raining on you, there'll be no new begin You gotta put this all together, it's Will's Peace for you and me all join hands. Yes. All join hands. What a beautiful way to uh, end the night. I want to thank Sh I want to thank Michelle and Joanne for bringing these incredible libraries. I want to thank each and every one of you, all of the staff, all of the participants, all of the healers, all of the musicians, the chimes all the hotel staff, and all of you for coming from all over the world to be here tonight. I want to thank the speakers for bringing their messages and for having the courage to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The, last, uh, the last thing I would like to do, if you will all just sit for one minute, is if someone can go back and get Ann to come in here. The last, uh, thank you, Angie. The last uh, year, last October, Ann's uh, mother was close to death and she had to miss our trip to Greece, which she loves. She loves Greece. I mean, after she saw that movie with John Travolta and Olivia <laughs> Newton. <laughs> She really wanted to go to the country and see it firsthand. Uh, she's had a lifetime love affair with Greece. She's always loved it, and she wasn't able to go. She had to fly over to Scotland, take care of her mother in Glasgow. And I went to Greece and came back, and then Anne came back, and uh, we knew something was wrong. And so we went to the doctor, thinking that she had an ulcer. And uh, she came back in tears and said they thought it, thought it was cancer. And we didn't believe it. And she went back three days later and they said it's cancer and it's stage three plus. And uh, we were devastated. And it was hard. And it took us about 10 days to get our feet on the ground and come to terms. And they told her that it was rectal colon and that she would have a permanent colostomy bag and that there was probably spreading in other organs and that uh, they would not know if it was stage four and that if there was an opportunity. And we started praying, we cried first, and then we started praying and uh, our message came through that no, that's not gonna be what happens, that uh, Anne's gonna be fine. And, uh, and we've got a lot of things that we're gonna do yet and it made me really appreciate time and realize that no matter who you are, you can get blindsided and that things can change in, as what they say is a New York minute. So my message to you at this point is don't take anything for granted. Take a chance, I mean, take the opportunity to let people know that you love them. If you have some unfinished business in your life, Get it done. Get it taken care of. If there's somebody you need to apologize to, if there's a family member you want to straighten things out with, do it. Because it's really in the end love that matters. And so we began praying and Anne went into a really intense radiation program and she had incredible pains because the tumor was the size of a cantaloupe and created a tremendous amount of pain. And when the When the surgery took place in December, it was nine and a half hours. And uh, there were three different surgeons. We didn't have medical insurance and they, we were very lucky that we had three of the best at MD Anderson. And after the surgery, they came in and they told us an act of God had occurred, that they were able to 
save the, the rectum. She's going to be mad that I said that. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it appeared there was no spreading, that they had done an initial patho pathology, and there was not even any cancer in the, uh, any other organs or in the lymph glands. And so, Dr. Padala. <laughs> Dr. Padala said that it was an act of God, and, uh, and it's been amazing. And so she continues now in chemotherapy uh, as a preventative, and uh, that finishes in about three months. There will be a final surgery to reverse the colostomy, and uh, it's been a challenging year, but an amazing year, and we've learned to appreciate the time that we have and to recognize that you don't always know what's coming next and that you really need to appreciate the people you love and we love all of you. Thank you. You wanna just say a minute? No, I'm not gonna speak. Just let Ann say a few words. Thank you all from my heart. I didn't expect this. I said, I'm not getting in there. I'm not getting up the stage. <laughs> Ken insisted. But from my heart, I thank you for the love, for the healing, just for being there for me. I felt it. I knew sometimes I couldn't answer your emails, uh, but you were always in my heart, and I felt the love, and I, I thank you all. I thank you all. God bless you. <laughs> We'll end with this bit, but I think I told you this. The, the doctors were telling Ann how difficult it could be that these drugs Affected could all. moods and all of that. And the doctor said to her, and this is her sense of humor, do you wake up grumpy in the morning? And she said, no, I let him sleep. So. <laughs>